Hello, as we continue in segment two of the March 17th uh, lecture, I want you to look at slide 20, 26. In 26, we're starting to talk about the number, how those muscle tissues fire. In essence, muscle tissues are hooked, uh, are connected with the nerves, with the motor neurons. These are the synapses, are the fibers that are connected to the brain that fire those electronic impulses to the muscle tissue and make them work. Now the reality is, and if you'll look on in slide 27, the brain and the uh, nervous system are able to tell which set of muscles to fire, meaning that when a muscle tissue fires, it fires 100%. However, all of your muscle tissues don't fire when you're picking up a feather, and all of them do fire when you're picking up a, a load that's more than your capacity. So your brain as a computer is smart enough to understand how many um, muscle tissues it's going to take to pick up a feather or pick up something uh, much uh, heavier from that standpoint. Again, looking in uh, slide uh, 28, we're in a situation of uh, looking at the how to make muscles bigger, basically through overloading and continuing to, you'll continue to add muscle fiber through progressive strength exercises. Likewise, if you're in a situation uh, where you're in a cast, you're immobile, or the muscle atrophies, it will decrease in size. So it's one of the things that you're continually having to uh, fight or an effect. Now, just to review the progressive resistance exercises, the components of it, and we've talked about it before, is basically one is progression through uh, frequency, intensity, time, and type uh, noted in 31, or excuse me, in uh, 29. And those general statements are overviewed there. If you've got one area that you want to work on, obviously it needs to be your core. The core is anything in the central part of your body, shoulders through hips, whether it be back extensors, whether it be the uh, abdominal muscles, the deltoids and trapezes, shoulder muscles, and all that kind of stuff. The extremities, arms, and legs are not nearly as important. You may notice that seniors have a tendency to fall. One of them, it's not a balance issue because you're constantly balancing back and forth. As you're younger, you've got plenty of strength to overcome that. As you get older, those core muscles get weaker and and they're not as strong, and you can fall. Looking into 31, starting to review what the fit formula is. You've seen it a thousand times. Basically, how often you do it, what uh, resistance you're doing, how many times you're doing it, and what type of workout that you're into. In progressive resistance exercises, basically you're always trying to increase the loads. Progress, as you will, as you go up the, up the ladder. And in uh, principle specificity in uh, discussing in 33 is basically how you're functioning or working out different parts of your, of your body. There's no one piece or one exercise you can do that does it all. So you have to uh, work on specifics like legs, arms, abs, backs, cardiovascular system, what have you. And uh, health benefits don't last forever. If you think they do, just ask a, a person. In fact, you may ask yourself. If you were a high school athlete and you were in great shape as a, shall we say, a senior, uh, how did you feel six months later, a year later? Did you still have it? The answer is no way. It, you lose it. And indeed, in another way, if you don't use it, you will lose it. Things do reverse. So it comes in at 35. And uh, slide 36, activities is like, are like taking, shall we say, aspirin for a headache. Uh, you take one, you get a, a dose response kind of situation, but it generally takes more than one activity to make that happen as you continue on. And also, the law of diminishing return takes place. Uh, have you ever been on an on-ramp to an interstate? And basically, you know you get heavy traffic and you get a floorboard to merge in, where you get a huge response initially to the amount of activity you uh, exert. However, as you reach that maximum point, it gets slower and slower to reach that uh, plat or that upper level echelon that you're looking for. It's a tough slide. Looking in 38, college students are generally good at this, is having time to rest and recover. 
uh, basically on working muscle groups, you need to work those in no closer than two days apart. So you can work in a, way, in a workout room every day of the week. Every you just work on different body parts and you're doing that. Cardiovascular system is a bit different. You can do that pretty much all the time. And in 39, we are individuals. Basically, uh, you're different from your best friend uh, because of your heredity, your age, your gender, ethnicity, your lifestyles, the whole ball of wax that makes you up. You're different and you're very unique from that standpoint. It's always a little bit uh, unfair to compare yourself to others from that standpoint. I want you to look in 40, how to determine relative strength. What this ends up doing is measures how strong you are in relationship to how big you are and how much your body weighs. If you look in uh, number 41, the question is asked, if you're a 200 pounder and you can lift 200, uh, if you're a 250 pounder and you can lift 200 pounds, are you stronger than a person who is 150 pounds and lifts 175 pounds? The answer is in uh, number 42. So obviously the smaller person uh, wins from that standpoint. Also, when you're working out, looking in 43, large muscle groups should be worked out first, smaller groups later from that standpoint. And uh, a couple of other things you'll see on testing. Basically, if you're trying to uh, strengthen your back muscles, uh, you should be pulling the objects to you. If you're trying to uh, strengthen your chest muscles, you're pushing them away. Thinking of beach, bench press, think of pull-ups from that standpoint. And American College of Sports Medicine, ACSM, is one that makes the recommendation on this one. Also, in doing workouts, if you're lifting a load, the breathing becomes a part. You don't want to put undue pressure on your lungs. So if you're lifting a load or moving a load from that standpoint, you should be exhaling. And during the recovery aspect, you should be inhaling. A couple of different kinds of exercises here of isotonics. And these are the ones, this is in slide 47. In essence, basically, if you're raising or lowering or moving weights, such as weightlifting or calisthenics, this is an isotonic type exercise. If you'll go to 48, then you're basically exercising with having little or no movement. Best way I can describe that to you, shall we say you're sitting in a seat and you put your toe under a couch or another chair or what have you and attempt to, uh, to move that sofa. You know, you can't move it, but in essence, by contracting that muscle extremely hard, you've exerted force and basically you can exercise that muscle. Great way to, that's a great, great way to rehab uh, muscles when you're trying to uh, get ready for surgeries or something like that, knees or legs or whatever. Think of those things. More recently, folks are getting isokinetics and that's coming in 49. Isokinetics is basically movement oriented and weight movement oriented exercise that take a full range of motion in such as swinging a bat like you're a baseball player or motions that you would be using in football or set into an exercise motion so that you can also uh, they'll emulate what you're doing and it builds those muscles for those particular sets. I'm going to stop now. This will be segment B and then we'll get a, a third segment before we're over.